guys, welcome back to Wacky Engineering, and today we're going to be putting together this PLC trainer. This is one of the trainers that we're going to be using for some of the tutorial videos and a couple of our other videos. And at the heart of this trainer, we have this Micrologix 1000. We have some push buttons here. We have a push button station. We have a fuse holder. We have some DIN rail. We have a 2x6, about 3 feet long. We have it propped up with some 2x4s just so if any of the screws protrude through this board it won't get my table here. We have a power cord. We have some white and red wire. We have some screws and we have some tools on the table. The first thing to keep in mind about this trainer is we're putting this trainer together so that we can use it. It doesn't necessarily follow uh, NEC code. It's not UL listed. so. Build this at your own risk, but it will work when we're done with this video, so that much I can guarantee. So the first step is going to be mounting some of this stuff, so we're going to mount this DIN rail first. And we'll just mount it basically at the end. Okay, we got the DIN rail mounted. We'll see if this will just pop right on there. We'll pop this fuse holder on there. If you guys want to build this trainer, we will have links in the description for all of these products. One of the things I would probably recommend getting used off of eBay would be the PLC itself. We will have a link to some PLCs on Amazon, but I would highly recommend just getting a used one on eBay. You should be able to find one for less than $200. We will also have a link to some of the tools here and some of our preferred tools that we use in a lot of these different projects. So go ahead and hop in the description and check that out. Okay, we got the PLC mounted, we got the fuse mounted, so we're gonna try to mount this operator panel real quick. And the first thing we're gonna have to do with that is we're gonna have to drill a couple holes in the bottom of the black portion of it. So, Two holes is probably enough. So the next thing we need to do is mount these switches in this operator station. So, so the way these work is you push this yellow keeper in and then you can pull the uh, push button itself out and then it's got this ring on here that you can tighten with these Phillips heads once you get it in there. Um, so stick that in there and then screw your ring back on. And then go to our Phillips head here. And this is a very handy screwdriver to have. We'll have this linked in the description as well. But we can screw this in to kind of tighten it a little bit. And then that goes on there. And then the next thing to keep in mind is this does have to be clocked a certain way. Um, so you just look for these little notches here and here and line them up with the notches on here. And you just pop it back in there. So we'll do that for the rest of these real quick. Okay, so we have all the switches mounted. We do have one hole that we don't have a switch for. We might add one later, but for now, four switches is good enough. And these are illuminated switches. So uh, the switches themselves will be the inputs and then the lights on here will be the outputs for the PLC. Okay, we're gonna have to strip this insulation back just a little bit more so that we can fit the main power wire Okay, so we're going to land our black wire, which is our incoming hot, to this fuse holder. And then we're going to land the ground to the ground terminal. And then we're going to land this white wire 
in the L2 or neutral terminal, and we're gonna double up another white wire, and it's gonna run out to this push button station. So we'll go ahead and cut a piece of the white wire from our spool, and then we will run it from here to the push button station. We'll cut it a little bit long, and we can use some of this excess somewhere else, and we can start landing some of these wires. So the black wire is gonna go into this fuse holder. Our white wires double up under the L2 neutral terminal. And our ground wire. Okay, so we're going to cut this little knockout cover here. We're going to cut a slit in it. That way we can shove some wires in there and it'll still kind of be protected a little bit from dust and debris getting in here. So we'll shove this white wire in here and this will end up going to the X2 terminal of the push buttons for the light. Um, so these push buttons have X1 and X2 and that is for the lighted portion. And then the other side of it is gonna be either four and three if it's a normally open contact or if it's on one of the red buttons that's normally closed, it'll be one and two, and that's for the contacts. Um, but right now, we're just gonna wire up the neutral side of the lights, which is X2. And we'll make our wires long enough to wire into here, and then once this is all wired up, then we'll just push it down like that. So we can cut and strip. And then we're gonna make little jumpers that go to each of the X2s. And we'll make them short enough to where we can uh, just connect them and then kind of fold them over. So we'll cut three of these. Okay, we have our jumpers, so we are going to land this first wire and a jumper under the X2 terminal. And we'll put our next jumper in here. And we'll come back and tighten all these in a little bit. Okay, so we need another long piece of white wire to go back to the PLC. Okay, we'll go ahead and strip the one end and we're gonna land it with that last jumper going to X2. And then we're gonna take it back to the PLC. And the reason we were doing that is the inputs to the PLC need neutral. so. We are just simply using this as a connection point to get back to the PLC so that we don't have to use any terminal blocks or any wire nuts or anything like that. Okay, so we'll switch to the flathead here. We'll get these a little bit tighter. Pushing these in here so that they'll clear whenever we end up going to put this cover back on. Okay, and then like I said, the other end here is gonna land back to the PLC and it's gonna go to the AC common. If we were using more than four inputs, we would need to land another jumper from this wire and AC common to the other AC common for the rest of the inputs. But we're only using four, so we're just gonna land it to the one AC common terminal. But if you wanted to use all of your inputs, you'd have to have a jumper going to the other AC common. Okay, so we should be done with the neutral now. So now we can move on to the power wire. So the first thing we have to do is run a wire uh, from the other side of this fuse into the PLC. And then we also need to power up 
our contacts for the outputs. So we'll make some jumpers going to these different outputs. And then we'll also run power into the contacts of each of these push button switches. And then we'll run the other side of the contact from these push button switches back to the inputs. And then the last thing we'll do is run the output wires to each of the lights. So we'll get us a long piece of wire here because we're going to need quite a bit of it. Okay, so we'll strip this. So straight from our power wire, our uh, cord here, we went into this fuse block so now we're going to go from the other side and we're going to land it to the power of the plc and while we're at it we're actually going to shove another wire under here um, that way we don't have to use the plc as a connection point um, this has a little bit bigger terminal in it so we'll go ahead and land it at the fuse block. So we'll cut this and strip this and this will be to power up the PLC. And this is going to the L1 terminal on the PLC. Then we're going to run this wire into the VAC VDC that's lined up with output zero. And then we will also make some jumpers so that we can jumper to each of these VAC VDCs. And we're going to do that for output zero, output one, and then output two and three. So once again, we have four lights, so we're going to be using four outputs. So this wire is coming from our fuse block. You always want to check that you don't have any little straggler strands sticking out from your wire so that they don't come across and touch, in this case, this ground that's right next to it. And then we'll get our jumper in here. And you don't want to tighten them too tight. Okay, and then we're going to strip another piece of long wire and these two are going to double up on the VAC VDC that's for output 2 and output 3. And we will put on the screen a diagram from the manual of this PLC so that you can kind of see uh, what the manufacturer recommends as far as how to wire this up. So if you need to refer to that you can Pause the video or double check that if you have any confusion. Okay, so we have our outputs that are gonna be powered up and this is just going straight back to the fuse. So this is always gonna be hot. We're gonna run the other end of this wire over to the switches and it's gonna to be to the contact part of the switches. So, and we'll need some more jumpers as well. So for instance, we will probably land them on the terminal number one for the normally closed and three for the normally open. So on the red buttons, we're gonna go into one, then we're gonna piggyback to three, piggyback to one, piggyback to three. And that's basically just giving us power going up to the switch. And after that, we'll go from the other side of the switch back to the inputs of the PLC. One up here. And then we're going to need three jumpers again. We'll make them about the same size. We can go ahead and strip both ends of these. We'll go into terminal one. 
and then stick our jumper in there. We're gonna just switch to the flathead. This flathead seems to be working a little better. Okay, then for the green button, we're gonna go to terminal three. And then put our next jumper in there. Okay, coming from the other side of the switch, we're gonna to go to these inputs over here, and that's input zero, input one, input two, and input three. And so from left to right, we will just do the first red switch as input zero, and then input one, input two, and input three. So we need four wires that are gonna be roughly this long. And so we will be going on this first switch from terminal two here to input zero over on the PLC. And then from the next one, we're gonna be going from terminal four over to input one, then terminal two on this switch over to input two, and then terminal four on this switch over to input three. We'll get us another long piece of wire here. Okay, so now we have our inputs going back to the PLC from the switches. So now all we have left is to run our outputs going to the lights. So I realize now that my camera angle probably cut off what I was doing over at the PLC, but from each one of these contacts of these switches, we went back to the appropriate input on the PLC. Okay, so now we can start landing the outputs from the PLC over to the correct light. So in this case, since our inputs were zero, one, two, and three, Going back to the inputs of the PLC, we'll go ahead and do our outputs, 0, 1, 2, and 3, going to those same um, buttons just so we don't have any confusion. So this will be output 0, output 1, output 2, and output 3. Okay, so we have all of our wires landed now. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to stuff all this in here. And first I will clean out all of the scrap wire and insulation out of here. Okay, so we're gonna plug this trainer in and there is already a program in here that was used to just test these lights and see if they light up. And then uh, we should also be able to see if the inputs are coming into the PLC as well, so. Okay, we wired it correctly because all the lights came on and on the PLC itself, it has some indicator lamps and it's telling us that every single output is triggered on right now. And that's just what the program told it to do. Uh, and then right now, zero and two are on and that's because they are a normally closed push button. If I push the green button, input one comes on. And if I push the other green button, that input comes on. Now on the camera, it looks like they're just flickering or flashing. They're not, I don't know why the camera is picking it up like that. So these ones that are flickering right now are just on solid. But 
it does work and we will be utilizing this trainer for several of our tutorial videos and we'll probably even use this trainer to power a catapult we're working on so if you guys thought this video was informational please like subscribe hit that alert icon and anytime we make a new video you'll be able to see it thanks for watching